how to create an effect like this, a noise effect, distorted noise effect in Photoshop. I'm using 2024, I'm using a Mac, but it could be done PC as well and earlier versions. So let's just go and create a document, file and new. I'm going for 1920 by 1080. You could of course go for a bigger document. Click create. The colors here, black and white, you can see there. The filter I'm just gonna use, we'll use those. So filter and filter gallery. And I'm gonna go for this one, reticulation. You can find it in the sketch. Now you can modify density, you can push it like that, maybe go for very low, or you can go that way. Because it's weird, isn't it? You go the other way, so you get more and then you get less. Okay, so I'm just gonna go for about the middle and click OK. What you can do, you can apply it a couple of times. What happens is quite a weird option is that filter and filter gallery, obviously it's using that filter, it creates that sort of effect. It actually creates some more noise, but it's a more chunky noise. Weird sort of unusual design there. You get sort of like patches in this design, sort of breaking through. You've still got that noise, but you've still got other bits of noise that seems to have come into the whole thing. Now you could, of course, go with filter and maybe apply a little blur. If you want a slight blur into that, to see you get a really nice noise effect, maybe reduce that down, just so you get rid of some of the light. Up to you on that, because the next step I'm gonna do is a liquefy, because I want to distort it. But you could use, of course, other distortions, a whole load of distortions. So filter and go down here to distort and use maybe wave. That's a really good one for creating distortions. But I'm gonna go with liquefy. Liquify is great because you can now stretch and distort it in all kinds of ways. I'm just gonna increase the size, maybe go for about 900, depends on the document you've got. And I'm using this one, the forward warp tool. So forward warp tool, you can just drag and you can see as you do that, so you get that sort of lovely distortion that way and just drag it, maybe do it at different angles. Quite often I like to do that. Don't just do it straight, but just sort of curve it so you get a sort of lovely curve in it. And you can do the same down this way as well, just gain, curve so you can just see stretch it up that way now try and avoid pulling at the edge because sometimes you pull the edge you get that because i've got the pin edges that's the key thing that's a really useful thing pin edges but it does mean you end up with this sort of weird sort of lines there which could be useful for many effects as well but what you can do you can just stretch that out so you can really push that now you don't want to push it too far it'll start looking up really ugly but I think it's just nice just to drag it down. You can drag it down in all kinds of different directions. But what I want is this lovely wave or curve right in the center, across the center. So I've got that design now. And then click OK. I've got that. What I can now do, I can actually combine multiple layers of this. Now I could have actually generated multiple layers, applied different effects to them, the reticulation, different ones and then of course apply different liquefiers and then built up a complex image that way. But you can also just simply go to layer and you can duplicate, click okay. And then I can apply some other transform, I can apply it again. What you can do, you go to filter and liquefy. So you apply liquefy again to that. And now you get more intense distortion, you've got, but it's still along that same path. And that's the key thing. Now you could also go for edit apply transforms and maybe use skew or various flip horizontal or vertical to create some interesting combinations because I'm going to use now the layers. Find that in the window menu, layers. Just go up here, select the top one and then go over here and go for say darken or run through. And maybe go with lighten or overlay. You can just vary, just try out different ones. You might think that one better. You can just run through them, normal, soft light, hard light and so on. I'm just going to go with that overlay. So overlay, and now I can flatten it. So layer and flatten image. So it's all flattened into a single layer. I can, if I want, go with filter and again liquefy. So you can again distort it, but that sort of makes it like near enough like a continuous streak. It's like it becomes a road sort of system or whatever going through there. It's all continuous line now. Don't want that. Still want some noise coming through whole point of this is, is the noise. And now with that, what I can do, I can apply some color to it. There's a number of ways you could do that. 
one of the ways I quite love to do is I just go over here, rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna go with, use shape, shape option, click there, and you can go and set a color. So you go for say red, and I can apply that, simply just drag over the whole lot, that's one option, and then you can go over here and you can go through blend mode, so you can go dark and multiply, and all those sort of things, overlay, to create some quite interesting color effects. That, and of course, once you've done that, you can always go layer and flatten it again. But another option is to use adjustment layers. You can do that, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and just go down here, gradient map. Gradient map, really useful feature. Click OK, you can add all kinds of colors. You can go with any gradient. So let's just click there. And I've got a load of ones here. So you can select a gradient there and you can see you can get a very intense sort of, sometimes it's actually nice if you just apply it with a very basic one, something like that. So you can get a whole range. You can just select all kinds of different colors very quickly using this. Maybe you can decide, you know what? Don't want that one. Let's just go down here and go with pastels. And you can apply those and so on. But another great option with this is you can always just click here. And that brings up the gradient map editor. So click there, or the gradient editor. And you can go with solid, perfectly reasonable. You can also change the smoothness. So you can just change that, tweak this. But a good one, noise. Just go with noise. Because then you bring in a whole range of color options. You can modify these. But you can also change the roughness. You can push it really low. So it's just subtle color changes now. Also, you can randomize it. So you can just click there. As you randomize it, and see what happens. And you can also change things here. You've got HSP, lab, and so on. And you can tweak these restrict colors to certain areas, and so on. I'm just gonna go with that. Nice little color effect, but you can always go back to it later. So you can randomize it and decide, you know what? Change that, change that, change that. Click OK. At any point, this panel, if you select that layer, you've got the properties here. That's in the window and properties. And you can just go here, click here again anytime, change the roughness, reduce it down, and again, randomize. And you can run through a whole range of different colors can be applied. Maybe go out. The only trouble with the randomization is that unfortunately, if you found something earlier, don't think there's any undo to go back. So you've gone past it. But so you go with that one, click OK. But also what you can do, because it's a layer, is you can always go here. Just go here to layers, make sure you selected it. Go normal, darken, multiply, color, burn, linear burn, so you can run through those and apply different ones there, overlay. So once you're happy with that, you've got these layers, of course you don't have to keep that. Always, once you're finished, you can always flatten it or merge them. So let's just go to layer and flatten image. So it's all flattened and now you've got this lovely distorted effect like this, this one here. Obviously, depending how you do the different designs, you can see this one, probably a combination of other layers. So you can do multiple ones, multiple ways, maybe have some like smooth ones as well. So this one, you could decide, you know what, let's just apply a filter and go to blur and Gaussian blur and blur that, or maybe again, layer and duplicate. With duplicates, it means you can apply the blur on top, so filter, just go down here to blur, Gaussian blur. That's another option, so you can apply that, maybe not too much, or you might want to reel quite a lot. Click OK. You can always then, because it's just a normal layer, I'm not gonna apply adjustments anymore as a layer, but you can always go to image, then go to adjustments, and then maybe go with color balance or hue and saturation, and just modify it slightly. So you can go with maybe purple, Click OK, then go here to normal, and then go with darken, multiply, and so on to create even more lovely designs, very unusual sort of sweeping designs like that, noise effects. And again, layer and flatten image. And also to finish it off, maybe go to filter, stylize, and oil paint. And you can then create this lovely sort of, especially if you push it up, maybe not too much, you can just vary it. You don't have to go with cleanliness, you can just keep it fairly low, because a lovely smearing effect. And you can apply it a couple of times, especially if you've let them set the value quite low. 
Well, hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know. And please check out the next video on how to create all kinds of amazing effects in Photoshop.